My, my dad's been managing betting shops for the best part of 30 years. And when I, when I grew up, I can you know, remember putting up posters in the shops and you know, he used to run William Hills and Leighton High Road and that was and he used to bring home the slips the old football slips and my sister and I would go through them and go through the losers and it was a, it was a bit of a lesson really in that we'd get about 100 slips and only four or five would be winners which he'd then settle. If our, you know, if our traders they'll look at look at the day and they'll look at a horse they think it's worth taking on and and, if, you know, and I know this is going to sound very PR-like, but I know we, you know, people complain that Betfair dominates and all the bookies do now is look at Betfair and, you know, we try and have an opinion. And sometimes we get it right. We took on Camelot in the St Ledger. We got it right. We took on Kings Barnes in a Racing Post Trophy. We got it wrong. And that's part of it. And it's, you know, you know the landscape's changed since Betfair. There's no doubt about it. And we don't want to be sticking up a massive arb. You know, for, for people who do that, but you know, within reason, we like to, you know, we do like to have a bit of a, a look at things and take a view, and I like that. I mean, it's not me personally, but you know, I'll have a little bit of input perhaps. Um, I'm not, you know, but it's up to the traders, and if they think one's worth taking on, I'll happily go along with that. And that hour you do, is it only on Saturdays? Remind me of that. It's mostly Saturdays, then for Cheltenham it will be all four days of festival and, and big race days. It might might stick in a Friday as well if it's a big, big, big meeting. And, so that's uh, between what, 11 remind 11 and 12. Me? Yeah, 11 to 12, happy hour at stanjames.com. And you try and offer the best price? We, we clear top price, uh, yeah, which, which may or may be big and better fair. We're human. We, you know, we make a book and we try and make a good book. And you know, you want to be in a situation where you can make a book where everything's almost a winner. But I do, you know, you're gonna. There's always going to be one or two horses in there that that's going to be a loser to the bookie. And law of averages dictate they'll come in at some point. And if we take that to a wider perspective, then there are so many sporting events that punters can back on, bet on these days that. I mean, you, 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 those who make the odds for you, you can't, they can't possibly know every thing about a game, a football match taking place in Belgium or somewhere, no, you know, so. of course not. I mean, but, you know, I think generally the, the ones we're big on are, are horse racing and, and football. I mean, we're, we're, we'd like to think we're very competitive on football. We do pick certain matches out for our best odds bundle as we call it and yeah. so we'll, we'll have top price one team and then we'll have top price all first and last goal scores correct scores under over two and a half goals and I think there might be there might be one more in that oh double result the half time full time um, which is working well and because we did it during the Euros with with matches we would often go we'd often go top price England because as you know England are always over bet because of the patriotic pound um, and we went, a lot of games went top price all first goal scorers. And I think actually for Euros, when every match went top price first goal scorers, which was fine for some matches, but not so good when Cristiano Ronaldo is playing because everyone bets on Cristiano Ronaldo and you're looking at a massive liability. Um, oh, he dominates it. And similarly, when Barcelona are playing, Lionel Messi dominates the goal scoring. So, um, but we had a look at that and thought for the new season, the Premier League season, we'll tweak that a bit. And uh, we've got something, it's very competitive, you know, we, you know, we look on price comparison, odds comparison sites. Yeah, yeah, price yeah. comparison, yeah. odds comparison. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we look on there, and we try and keep up to date. But obviously, you know, it's a manual process. If someone pushes a price out, we'll get try and match them straight away. And you know, we'll always try and be in bold on those odds comparison sites. But uh, yeah, it's competitive, and it's. But we, we're doing all right, and and we usually our football traders usually get it right. You know, my background is a journalistic background. My background is a TV production background, and I still like to think I apply that to what I do. And I, I still feel that's fairly important. It's fairly important to what I do. I do a lot of press releases, and you know, I put there is spin involved, but it's not. You know, you know, there, there is spin, but I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to lie about things because that's just not. You know, not what I do. And, and most I think, punters are talking out of their pockets. 
Well, yeah, to some extent. I mean, I, you know, I, I know I engage with people on Twitter, and I, you know, I get some stick, and I, I try and, I try and reply to that. I try and deal with that, and I try and say, look, this is how it is. Now, you may not like that, yeah. and at the end of it, I hope we'll agree to disagree. You know, and I'll, you know, initially I'll try and change your mind on certain things, but at the end of the day, we'll agree to disagree. You know, I represent StanJames.com. I enjoy working with StanJames.com. I think, I think we're a good bookmakers and there is a lot of choice out there don't get me wrong and I think you know we try and be competitive um, we're not as big as some of the other firms obviously um, we have a reputation I think it's fair to say for, for closing accounts and I think some of that's a bit unfair but you know I, I try and tell it as a what? successful hunters successful punters even I had the accusation level that we close the account of losing punters um, <laughs> which which you know which is is is, a, is actually feasible because people's betting habits change I mean if you're if you're losing a certain amount and suddenly you turn into you know a really lively punter who's who's winning all the time then we might have a look yeah. and I don't think that's wrong um, at the end of the day we're a business you know, bookmakers are businesses and you know I think Stan James on the whole if you play fair by us we'll play fair by you and I think that's the way we are and I know punters get frustrated if they can't get on they get restricted and you know it's happened to me before you know I've got a couple of bookmakers have restricted me on bets and taken away certain privileges and that's just the way it is. But the argument seems to be not that I've experienced it but the argument seems to be from some punters that the restrictions are too, for too little amount. There are people not able to get, you know, I'm talking relatively small amounts. Oh, why, would yeah. that, why would that come into force, do you know? Um, it's down to the traders. It's looking at people's profiles and seeing how they're bet. And, and that's how it, you know, how it works. And, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, some people can't get on, but that's just the way it is. And, you know, I'm... You know, I sympathise because I'm a punter myself, right. and you know, I get you know that seems to be you know a regular complaint I get from people on Twitter, and sometimes it gets a bit out of hand. But most of the time, I you know I explain, look, I'm sorry you've been restricted or or whatever, and and that's it. People would say different things about different bookies. Some some yes. people will get on fine with some bookies, and some will get restricted. And you know, we're all in the same industry. It's pretty much the same where you go. Uh, from a bookie's perspective, uh, for example, all weather winter meetings and I don't know, South or Wolverhampton, good news for bookies? They're good, especially when you've got weather like we've got at the moment. At least we get some racing. Um, I don't know. Um, it's a tricky one. I think there are a lot of racehorses out there. There are a lot of not massively talented racehorses out there and they have, to race, they have to race somewhere and I can't see a problem I, but I don't think they're a bookies benefit by any stretch I mean well because perhaps in a I don't know perhaps because in a 12 runner race of low grade very low grade you're horses, going to get a couple of lively ones in there I mean it's only going to be one by one or two perhaps maybe I mean, I think, especially when you're dealing with low-grade race like that, you're likely, you know, you're going to have trainers and owners wanting to land a touch. You know, I think, I can't see, but that's that applies to all levels of racing. So I can't see there that there being that much difference between, you know, in that respect. I don't think it's a bookie's benefit. I, I can tell you the amount of times. You know, I've been at Lingfield today for a jumps meeting, but I can tell you the amount of times I've been at Lingfield for your weather meeting, and seven out of eight favorites, six, seven, eight out, out of eight favorites are coming. That's not good for the bookies. Um, now it's low grade racing on the all weather. So, and that's bookies' your benefit. nightmare scenario, presumably. Oh, you know, absolutely. Like with football, your nightmare scenario in the Premiership would be what? Each oh, week? yeah, top four just coming in: United, City, Chelsea. Arsenal, well, regardless of who the top four are at any given time, the yeah. top four pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. And you can add Liverpool into the mix, who are always overbet, who are always too short a price. But they're, you know, they're, I guess because of the Asian market, Liverpool's very, very strong in the betting every week, and they're always a short price. So 
you know, we, you know, I always maintain that as a punter speaking now, I always try and take on Liverpool because they're always too short. But um, yeah, I mean, we've had, we had a quite a nice scenario the other week when the top four were kicking off, all kicking off at Saturday at three o'clock. Which, which is a very rare event so we did a, uh, an accumulator on all four winning and I think a couple of them didn't win so that was quite nice Today is my sister's birthday and she's a massive Liverpool fan absolutely massive red I grew up when Liverpool were the top team in the country I'm a Watford fan for my sins we came second to them in 82-83 we were second to Liverpool and we beat them last day beat them last day of the season to finish second uh, that seems a long time ago it was a long time ago but I, you know, I grew up Liverpool being the best team in the country and I still have that healthy respect for them in the same way that I didn't have when United were dominating um, I don't like Manchester United much I have to confess that's a dangerous thing to say is it, when um, you're on Twitter is it, um, it's a dangerous thing for anybody representing a bookie to say you're again don't like any team, surely. Oh. <laughs> but there we go. I like Liverpool. I like Liverpool. I've got a lot of time for Liverpool. I'm just, well, I'll always be better, bitter that they got John Barnes of us for 900 grand. But you know, time has, has moved on since yeah. then. <laughs> Still hurts. You'll get it. <laughs> I'm not sure I will. Highlight would be one of my highlights would have been at Cheltenham on the Friday, and, and not so much the Gold Cup. Um, although we were very, very happy to get long run beaten in the, in the Gold Cup company-wise, but personally, we had a box, um, Stan James had a box, right. and we're in the old Royal box, which are, you know, they're not, they're not like the new Royal box, but you know, they're perfectly serviceable, they're very nice. And uh, we had the owner of Brindisi Breeze in our box, and... Um, Poor old Brindisi. Yes, but Sandy was in the box, and his brother, I was talking to his brother a lot in there, I've been doing my media stuff but I popped in there and his brother was adamant I mean so adamant he would win just absolutely so I had a few quid on I phoned up my dad too because my dad was there on Gold Cup day as well and and he was there with a couple of mates so I phoned him up get a few quid there you know because Lucinda Russell wasn't sure about the ground because they thought he was a soft she thought he was, was a soft on, ground horse. Did you? And Un Artiste Thanks. as well Oh nice one <laughs> but um yeah, it, it was brilliant, and and I remember seeing them in the in the parade ring and just you know shaking hands with a couple of hugs, and it was just I think it was Sandy's first horse that he owned, and just the sheer joy. And obviously, subsequent events have been not Tragic. so happy. Yeah. That was absolutely yeah. horrible. Um, well, that's good because that makes a change from somebody saying Frankel. Well, Frankel was great. I, don't get me wrong. I mean. That was one of my highlights was his last race and it wasn't so much his win, I mean, of course he was six lengths out the back at the start and then got up, but it was one of the rare things I've seen in racing. I'm informed it happened the year before as well, but it was the first time I saw it was when after he crossed the finish line and him and Bullet Train were sort of taking the applause yes. and then Tom Queeley went back down to about the furlong pole. And it was you could, and I was in the press box, and you got a great view from there. And you see just hundreds of people just rushing to the rail, just absolutely sprinting to the rail to get close to Frankel. See just the warmth, the affection the public had for Frankel, and just wanting to get close to him. I just thought it was amazing, and and the roar as he turned for home. I mean, it was as loud as anything I've ever heard at a race course. At Cheltenham side, I mean Cheltenham when Corto Star was pulled up in that Gold Cup in March. I mean, the sort of spontaneous applause, it was just kind of moving. Tears on the back of the neck, time. That was worse than that on Franco and Chad. <laughs> I was there, I was, I'll, I'll name check him. He's good on Twitter, actually. Paul Ostermeyer, right. who goes to a lot of the races, and my regular sort of press room buddies. And um, the scenes I described, and you know, they're taking the applause. We were crying. <laughs> We had proper tears going. We were making each other worse as well because we were talking about it, and it was sort of like um, I don't know. It was weird, and it was it was almost it was wonderful, and it was almost a bit sad at yeah. the time because you know, it was his last race, and you know when are we ever going to see a horse that great again? I mean, we'd love to have seen him train on and maybe yeah. go on yeah. but you frankly you can understand why not I mean we were lucky to get him at the age of four because they could easily have retired him at three but it was purely magical and I had 
people, you know, even in the press box, people were, you know, yeah. almost hugging each other, you know, and hardened hacks, you know, we've been, been around the block and, you know, so once in a lifetime horse, without a doubt. Is it my imagination or are there more races these days with fewer runners? Are we seeing more four, five, six fields or am I just imagining? No, I, th I, I mean, it's, it it's anecdotal, isn't it? I, I, I'd go along with that. And I think it's quite sad in a way because, you know, we talk about, there's a lot of discussion about prize money and, and horse racing and you've got big prizes out there and you've only got a handful of horses going for it and you've got prize money down to, what, fifth, sixth place? It's, it's tricky with price-wise because he has his band of followers and they knock the price down. Sometimes the price will come back out in the afternoon. Um, there will be that initial surge and then there will be no one else will back it. Everything else, especially in the competitive handicaps, you know, everything else will get backed as well. So it, it can even itself out. Of course, we're best odds guaranteed, so it doesn't matter. I think tipsters are great and you can follow their advice. And if they've got an angle on the race and it's worth looking at. But there's, uh, the fun in gambling is surely using your opinion and beating the bookies that way and thinking, that bookie's got it wrong. I think this horse has been laid out for the race or this race will suit or whatever. And, and that's the fun of it. And it's not even the amount you put on. It's just, you've seen it. There's the price for the bookies. I'm going to take it. And I think the thing about, God, I'm no expert, but the thing about betting I enjoy most is putting a bet on. And even if it loses, thinking that was a good bet. And there are those bets out there. You know, there are talks about Corto Star earlier when you won the Betfair Chase last year. It's the it's the second time I've backed Corto Star. The first time was the Gold Cup he lost to Denman. So I've got that one wrong and I've got the following year wrong as well when he won it back. But he was too big a price for that Betfair Chase at Haydock. And I was very pleased to see him win and you know, God this after timing on a on a massive scale. But you know, sometimes the bookies get it wrong and I think trusting your judgment is great and it is so much more enjoyable where's the fun in just following price wise every Saturday I don't, I don't see it and you know and at the end of the day I think you know gambling is supposed to be enjoyable you know and if you're not enjoying it don't, don't do, it. do it you know it's in heart you know I think gambling is there to enhance your enjoyment of a sporting event and you know if you can make some money at the same time brilliant but you know for value yeah, and there's plenty out there, you know. I'm obviously going to say there's plenty of value with Stan James, but um, there is value out there.